Howdy lure enthusiasts. If this is your first time here and you want to learn how I make lures like this, then please subscribe and click the notification bell so that you don't miss out on anything. So in my original gator build video, um, I really did like this lure, but I was not very happy with the clear coat that I wound up with. I feel like it just fills in way too much of the texture and the detail, and it leaves it with a kind of an unrealistic glossy look on it. So ever since then, I've been thinking about making another one and um, maybe even adding a few improvements that I've been thinking about. Uh, one of the improvements I've been thinking about is uh, adding a lip just to see if maybe I can get uh, an improved swimming action out of it or maybe even make it a little bit easier to fish. And since it's almost Halloween, I thought I'd have a little bit of fun with the paint job and theme the new gator off of everybody's favorite raptor, Blue. Anyway, let's get started by casting up another resin gator. Fortunately, I wrote down my recipe from the first time, so this ought to go pretty quick and easy. Uh, we're going to be using the same smooth cast 325. And this is what we learned last time is that you need to pour them separately, A and B, to save yourself a little bit of time because this is going to go real quick. And then I'm going to put, I don't think it really matters which one you do it to, but I'm going to put my micro balloons into part, uh, part A there. Okay, now that we've got all those uh, micro balloons mixed in, we are going to, we're going to pour in part B here. And then we have less than two minutes to get this thing mixed and poured into our mold. Well, nothing to do but let it set up and then we'll come check it. All right, let's take a look at what we got here. I'm going to be honest. I'll be shocked if this uh, worked. I may have to I may have to do it again cuz that did not go well in my opinion. But you never know. I could be surprised. I don't know, maybe. We can trim that off. Dang, I think we got us a good a good pour. Let's get a close look at that. Nice. So on this one, I know I want to add a lip slot to try and get a little bit more action uh, out of this particular lure. And the question is, where do I want to put that lip slot? And I think I want to put it right in here, just past the jawline maybe. Um, I'm just going to kind of eyeball it. 
but I think I want it to be right in there. Now one way to make sure that this is straight is I'm going to put a piece of tape from that V groove right there to the center line of the mouth right there and make myself a straight line. Okay. And I'm using tape because I can reposition it really easily if I need to. All right. So there's that. And then I'm going to eyeball that, but I'll check the straightness with a piece of paper here. Let's see. Now, as I cut this, I'm going to want to cut it pretty much straight up and down because this is a top water and I want it to stay on the top. I just want to get some action out of it. Okay, I'm going to straighten this slot out using my uh, rotary tool here. You're going to want to wear a mask while you're working with this because this fine dust, you don't want to you don't want to breathe that. So I'm going to put on a respirator and straighten up this slot. Got myself a brand new sheet of Lexan polycarbonate. And I've got a lip sketched out here, which I think will be really good for this. Let's take a look. Yeah. go. I think that'll be just about right. Now the other thing um, I want to do is ballast this thing and if you watch the original video I just put one weight in the belly here on the front piece um, because the uh, lure tended to lay flat on its back if it was cast just the right way and so a little bit of weight on the belly would make it roll over. I think I think the only reason I need a little bit of weight in the belly is because this piece is so large. I think the hook hangers on the other parts uh, added enough weight to ballast uh, all these segments. So we're going to add a 5 8 inch um, piece of lead right here. got these uh, pre-made weights that I can just pop one in there and glue it into place and we're off to the races. I'm not going to do a lot of talking through this part because I'm going to be wearing my respirator but I'm just going to seal that up with some baking soda and Instacure and then I'll recarve this belly detail um, so that you won't even know that it's there.
as you can see here, I kind of skipped ahead a little bit. I went on ahead and installed the hardware and uh, I just made some twist wire hardware and uh, I installed the lip here in the lip slot. And I did that using some 30 minute epoxy. But for right now, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put all these pieces on these clips so I can start priming it. First color I'm going to mix up is there's going to be just a hint of kind of a uh, light green, yellowish green color. So I'm going to mix up some of this transparent bright green and bright yellow, mostly yellow. So let's just put one little bitty drop of green in there and see what we got here. I'm going to stir it up with a paintbrush here. Why don't we throw a little bit of detail moss green in there. Two. This primer is going to wind up being kind of a good uh, mid-tone for me for what I'm looking for. All right, I'm gonna try and make a wash here. Um, so I'm gonna use some of this transparent black and I don't know if this is gonna work. I'm gonna add some water to it. I actually uh, had a bottle of thinner for this, but it busted and so now I don't have any. We wanna get it fairly thin. The idea is to let it settle into the cracks and crevices pretty well so that it uh, gets down in the dark areas and, and shades it. Yeah. I'm not super experienced in this, but I think that's looking pretty good. It darkened it up a little bit more than I wanted, but I'm gonna go back and hit it with some uh, some lighter gray as a highlight. But I think it really blended in that green really well and made it look really natural. Since I've got multiple pieces here, what I can do is one at a time, I can work on them and then I can compare it to the previous piece to see uh, what the difference is. And uh, here's the last stage we're at and you can see that it gave it a whole lot more dimension and depth. I'm really pleased with that. Again, I think it's a little dark, but we're gonna lighten it up anyway. So I think that makes a really good base for us to move forward on. So let's go ahead and do that wash on all the other pieces. I feel like that's pretty good. I'm gonna mix up a little bit more of that mid-tone gray and do a, just a little bit of airbrushing over that just to kind of bring back the uh, lighter color. And so I'm gonna mix up a little bit of opaque black and opaque white here. Okay, I will say what I'm gonna do on this is I'm going to go at a really shallow angle uh, with my airbrush so that I don't spray down into the, the, the recesses as much. I'm gonna try and keep it kind of on the surface and I'm just gonna give it a little, a little misting on there, not trying to paint deep down in there, just trying to lighten it up just a hair. Let's do a comparison you know and I, I agree on camera that probably that darker one probably looks better but when you see the final product I think it'll I think it'll really make sense next I'm gonna mix up my highlight color and it's a color that I'm gonna need quite a bit and I'm gonna need it for the detail brushing so I'm gonna go ahead and take an empty bottle here and mix up enough uh, to make sure that I can complete the project but we're just gonna mix a little bit of opaque black into a lot of opaque white. It's a very, very, very light gray. I think that's what we want right there. Mm. 
All right, we're ready to move on to some brushwork here, and we're going to get started with this uh, custom super light gray that we made. And uh, I'm going to be using my um, wet palette from Army Painter that I got. I really like this system. Basically, it's a it's a sponge um, that I put a piece of paper over, like tissue paper. And I soak the whole thing in water, and it keeps my paint from drying out. This next little bit, I'm going to need some kind of faint um, lines here and there. I'm going to just water down a little bit of this. Okay, now I need to mix up some blue for the stripe here, and I'm going to start with this fluorescent blue, uh, the Wicked color, because it's pretty close to what I want already. I'm just going to darken it a little bit with some opaque black. Let's put enough to fill the bottom. I don't want to run out. We'll start with two, see what it looks like. I want to add a lighter blue highlight over um, each of these scales, uh, similar to what I did up here. I think it'll give it a really nice look. I don't want it to have as much contrast as this. I want it to be a little bit more subtle. So what I'm going to do is take a little bit of my blue here. get a drop of this uh, raptor gray here I'm ready to start on the eyes and I'm going to start with a base color of this pearl satin gold. And I'm going to attempt a wash over that. I want to try and put a little bit orange around the edge of it. So I'm going to take some of this uh, iridescent scarlet and I'm going to water it down like I did before and try and do a wash on that and see if it gives me the effect I want. If not, we'll figure out something else, but uh, I think it's worth a try. Alright, now we need to draw on the rest. I'm going to use a 
pin for that because I'll have a little bit more control. I could paint it on with the brush, but I'm not, I don't feel like I'm steady enough for that with a, with a brush just yet. So we're going to go with a pin. All right, so here's the deal. I was just about to call this done and uh, put some clear coat on it, but I decided that I don't like these lines that I painted under the eyes. I don't, I don't like that. I was trying to highlight the little cheekbones, but I feel like I uh, just made it look silly. So I'm going to repaint that area. Uh, and so what I've done is I've mixed up in my airbrush some um, gray that will match. You can see that uh, test piece I did there. I think that's going to match pretty well. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and mask that eye off because I certainly don't want to paint that again. So let's just put a little tape over it and As I talked about earlier, one of the things about this lure that I wanted to improve was the clear coat because as you can see, I used my traditional uh, two-part epoxy and um, it's got a nice tough shell on it, but what it does is it fills in all that texture and it kind of, I don't know, to me it lessens the overall appearance. So I wanted to put a different kind of clear coat on there to where I could maintain all this texture. Um, I'd really like to find something that's a little more matte, um, still kind of looking around. Best thing I've found so far here is this uh, KBS uh, Diamond Clear. Uh, they've got a single component spray here that we're gonna give a shot. Um, I feel like uh, it'll give it a good uh, tough finish without filling in all the detail. Um, but I do think it will have a little bit of a shine to it. This is the satin finish. If y'all have any recommendations for uh, clear coats with a, with a matte finish um, that would be good for this application, please uh, share it in the comments. I'd like to hear it. Uh, but for this lure for today, I'm gonna give this a try and we'll see how it does. I'm going to glue these uh, hinges into place with this 30 minute epoxy. I'm going to clear out as much of the extra um, resin as I can there so that's a nice clean joint and then I'm going to make sure that these are straight and then once this is nice and cured we'll go ahead and install the pieces together but I want that set up really good first so that I'm not trying to fiddle with a bunch of joints at the same time I can I can make it easier on myself by letting these cure and then I only have to worry about those two once I put them together
Let's get a length and weight on this thing. We'll start with weight. All right. Get this thing all the way on there. And I'm also going to put three sets of uh, four aught hooks that I'm going to use. All right, that's coming out at 10. 0.76 ounces. All right, now let's get a, a length measurement on it. Sixteen and a quarter. Sixteen and a quarter inches. Pretty good size snack. Before we get these out on the water, I kind of wanted to look at them side by side here on the table. With the different clear coat, you can see that there's still a lot of texture left in there. And you can feel the bumps and the ridges and everything over this whole thing. So overall, I like this better. It's still a little bit glossy to me. Now, whether or not this is going to hold up to any kind of abrasion or abuse, I don't know. We'll just have to wait and see. Um, but from an aesthetic standpoint, I, I like it better. Uh, for this particular lure because of the the carving and the deep detail that I want to maintain Yeah, I'm really excited to get these out on the water and see what they look like. We'll do a little comparison swim of them So I'll see you out on the water Okay, let's do a swim test of blue here All right To be perfectly honest, that uh, doesn't swim worth a darn. I think it's that lip. I don't think that lip's good for it. I can kind of get a swim out of it if I do a start stop reel. So the swim is not really improved. Um, I think my joints are a little bit too tight because I'm not getting the range of motion that I need. So I probably need to widen up that, that joint a little bit. But I really don't think that this lip is, is helping me at all on my action. Um, let's switch over to the original, but I think the, I think the original lipless had a whole lot more action to it. We got the original gator tied back on there, the lipless version. Uh, as you can see, the joints are a lot wider on it, so I can get a lot more motion out of it. I'm going to cast it over there a few times just for comparison, and we'll see what we think. Oh wow. Now nah, that swims way better. And I'm just doing a straight retrieve. I'm not doing anything funny to it. I think that swims a whole lot better. Let's have a quick comparison discussion here. Um, after having done the swim test, I, I still think the original has a much better swim to it, and, and I think that's for two reasons. One, I think the joints are wider, just a little bit wider, which gives it more range of motion uh, than this one. The other thing is, I don't think this lip really helps in this case. I think I think it um, actually hinders the motion more than anything, and really, I don't see any need to have a lip on it if it doesn't add any anything to the to the lure. So, you know, this is the kind of experimentation that you got to do to to uh, come up with a good design, and um, sometimes the the ideas you have don't work. So, another another thing to talk about is finishes. Obviously, I like the new finish a whole lot better. I like that new clear coat a whole lot better. There's just a world more detail uh, that that you keep when you do a thinner clear coat like that. 
the trade-off is that it's a little bit more fragile. I did uh, already scratch it when I was trying to clean out these eyelets. I scratched it right here. So you can damage that clear coat a little bit easier. You just have to be a little bit more careful with your bait. Whereas this one is really tough. It's got a nice tough shell on it, but you lose that definition in the, in the detail there. You lose that texture, which, you know, you know, may not matter depending on on what you're what you're wanting to do. But personally, I like this one a lot better. So I think if I were to make another um, gator lure, I would combine the best aspects of each one. I would combine the wider joint of this one and stick with the lipless design. But then I would combine that with this um, clear coat. And I think that would give me the best combination um, of the two. But overall, I'd say I really enjoyed this, um, this project. I enjoyed painting this one. It's a really cool pattern. But thank you for watching this video. And if you enjoyed it, I'd appreciate it if you'd give me a, a thumbs up. And uh, please feel free to leave a comment. I enjoy reading your, your comments and I respond to them as quickly as I can. Uh, there's getting to be more and more comments all the time, so it's a little bit more delay uh, for me getting back to some people, and I apologize for that, but uh, I'm trying to continue to put out as much content as I can. So, again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.